and back. Hello, everybody. Hello. Just making sure everyone's in here. Quick count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And perfect. All right. Welcome to the roundtable with Ethan Peck. Just a reminder to keep your chat window open for any timing cues. Uh, keep yourself muted until you're called on. Once you're called on, please say your name and outlet. Uh, just one question per round. If I have more time, I will go back through the rotation. Kicking us off will be Ian with heavy.com. Hey, hey Ethan, how are you? Good to see you. Thanks for doing this. So let me start with this. What, what's it been like to be in the center of the storm? People were clamoring for this since they first saw you. And it's the fans who really made it such a big thing that now it's a reality. What's that been like? Yeah, I guess it has been. It's been crazy. Um, I a, can't believe that I've been cast in this role still. It's still something very strange to me. Uh, and B, that there was such a hunger for a Pike Enterprise show, which of course Spock could be a part of, is absolutely thrilling. This has been really, uh, one of the greatest journeys of my of my life thus far and and may remain that way who knows um but uh yeah i feel so incredibly fortunate and lucky and grateful to be a part of this it's uh it's insane to me still jamie with starry constellation magazine oh do we have jamie uh -huh. All right, moving on to Rachel with the Mary Sue. Uh, okay, hi. So hi. Um, <laughs> with Trek, I come from a Trek family. Uh, and so it's, I have seen as many three different versions of Spock and yours is unique and fresh and still that Spock we know and love. And so what were kind of right. the challenges you faced like bringing him to life with this uh, Pike Enterprise era and making him your own while still being true to Spock? Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's a complicated question to answer. I would say that I'm still challenged every single day. I think I'm more comfortable at this point in time with the onus of the character being the custodian of this character. But I still read things in scripts that I get and I'm like, I have no idea how I'm going to do this or how it will be true to Spock because what's fun about him is that he does sort of live within these boundaries. Um, and then to place him in a scenario that he shouldn't be in or is really uncomfortable in, that's when I think really cool things start to happen um, with the character and, and I hope in my performance of the character. Um, but constantly I'm revisiting, uh, I say sort of crazily, Leonard Nimoy's voice in my head when I'm doing a lot of these scenes, you know, does this sound right? Does it, does it feel right? I, I constantly am checking in with um, I hope the spirit of his Spock and am channeling it as well. Um, and then there are things that are written for my iteration of Spock that were, have not been written before. And that is um, my privilege uh, as an, as an actor and um, as this, as this Spock. All right, here we are. Jamie, Starry Constellation Magazine. I love the scene between uh, Spock and Ahura where they're matching notes with each other. Did you have to do any kind of um, vocal training to sort of match each other sounds? Oh, uh, that's a lovely question. Uh, she's actually an incredibly, she's just like an incredibly impressive and talented person, um, but she's an incredibly talented singer as well. So I just did my best to kind of like sneak in behind her beautiful uh, singing. I myself was a trained classical musician. I played cello growing up, so I'm not totally tone deaf, I hope. Um, but in terms of singing, yeah, I was quite nervous about that. And uh, uh, we practiced quite a lot. Yeah. Aaron, Shrek Core. Hi, thanks, Ethan. Um, so does your time on Discovery at this point has been over for about three years or so. Um, and you're in filming season two right now, so you've been in working on the new series for some time. But um, between the end of Discovery and the added delays 
from the pandemic, starting production on Stranger Worlds, did that extra time give you an opportunity or, or did you use it as an opportunity to um, do any kind of rethinking or uh, a new approach to how you came to Spock for the new series? Yes, I would say absolutely in an indirect kind of way. When I was cast in this role, once I learned what it was, which was towards the end of the casting process, um, I was faced with this, this challenge and opportunity to grow, not just as an actor, but as a person. I believed I was barely worthy of it at that time. And that's my own personal thing and my own journey that I've, that I've been on since. Um, but uh, yeah, I, it's not every day or even every life that you must become more than you are. Uh, and the, the needs of this role, I think, required that of me, uh, for me to grow as a person, um, as well as, as as an actor. And the pandemic, I guess we'll call that time, um, really gave me a lot of time to flush, flush out myself, um, things that were not working for me as a person, as a human being on this planet. Um, I hope that I have been able to rid myself of that I think in turn really informed my work. So yeah, absolutely, that time was utilized. Great, thank you. Thanks. Mike, Trek Geeks. Hey, Ethan, how you doing? Good, how are you doing? Good. So uh, you mentioned before how uh, you've kind of heard Leonard Nimoy's voice uh, in your head as you're doing some of these, uh, some of these scenes for the show. Was there any trepidation on your part to go from a completely different Spock that you played in Discovery to now pretty much the Spock that everyone was used to seeing in the original series? Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm like filled with terror all the time. Um, I, I hope to not be as informed by it as much as maybe I was in the beginning. Um, but yeah, I, I want to be loved and accepted and celebrated, I guess, on some level, or my ego does. Um, I understand from an intellectual perspective that that will not occur, right, in totality. Like I, some people will like it, some people will not. And um, that's just a part of uh, what we do. But yeah, absolutely. I get, you know, new scripts. And like I said, I don't know how the heck I'm going to do it. And uh, that's informed my process in a really important way, right? I've done a lot of research and I've now had a lot of experience as the character on set on camera. And then I've got to allow a lot of space for the unknown, which is really uncomfortable, right? I think as uh as creatures on this earth, we want to be in control of things to, to, in order to feel safe emotionally. And um, I've had to do a lot of sort of undoing of that impulse, I guess, um, and to welcome chaos and, and sort of live in a, in a place of the unknown. That's really important to my work. Thank you. Thanks. Anthony, Trek movie. Hi, Ethan. So hey. You've talked about how your Spock here on this show is on an arc towards what you refer to as Nimoy Spock from the original series. So how are you calibrating that journey as you go through season one and now you're into season two to kind of check in to make sure you're, you're doing that arc? You know what I mean? Like how you're evolving, as it were. Dude, I have no idea. Uh, I'm just doing my best. No, I mean, there's definitely some, there's like an eye out for that. Um, and it's a very collaborative effort between myself and the writers and the producers and the other creative forces behind our show, because that's just a, that's a huge task um, that I don't think I can uh, shoulder by myself. Um, and also there's a lot of opportunity in Strange New Worlds to explore and see parts of Spock's inner world that we've not seen before. And there's really no roadmap for that that's already been laid out. So there is license in our exploration of the character in that regard, uh, which I'm really grateful for and something that really excites me about this show. Um, I think there is, you know, uh, there are certain touchstones um, qualitatively about the character that I probably couldn't articulate to you very well that just feel right and I hope um, 
appear in the way uh, that looks accurate in our in our final product. But um, that's a very collaborative effort, the calibration. And Kyle, treknews.net. Hi, Ethan. Thanks for doing this. Hey, my pleasure. So I'm, I've been thinking a lot about the production side of these Star Trek shows like Discovery and Strange New Worlds. And I'm curious, from your perspective, how has shooting your own show been different from appearing in Discovery Season 2? Oh, great question. Um, I mean, firstly, the shows are just so different in so many ways. I think the DNA is the same, right? Gene Roddenberry's vision, I think, is very much a part of both shows, uh, which is one of uh, inclusion, of celebration, of diversity, of curiosity, of sort of a harmonious existence between vastly different um, peoples and ideas. Um, but I mean, just by its look, the shows are very different. The tones are different. The colors are different of the sets, um, of the ships. And um, our show is episodic, which is something that we're all really excited about. Um, Akiva Goldsman put it wonderfully. He said, it's, there's serialized emotion, but each episode is sort of its own standalone adventure, um, which I think is great because so often I'm recommended shows by people. I, I love to watch film because it's a contained experience. You, you can have it in 90 minutes to two, two and a half hours. And, um, and it does something wonderful for you, hopefully, if it's, if it's done properly, right? And so I hope that our episodes can be like that for people and we'll convert a lot of uh, fans to our show and to the Star Trek universe because there are uh, so many great iterations of it that are, have already been made and, and exist and are ready to be seen. Fantastic, thank you. Thank you. Diana, TV fanatic. Hi there, Ethan. Um, hey. Thank you so much for doing this today. My, pleasure. My question is um, on the interplay between your character and yourself. In developing Spock, you're putting a lot of Ethan into Spock. And yeah. I love the humanity that's coming out in the five episodes that we've screened. Hmm. Um, thank you for that. How much has Spock as a character influenced you as a person? Spock's influenced me so much. It's weird. Uh, <laughs> I... I had to really look at myself when I was first cast in this role because I didn't know what I was auditioning for in the very beginning. And so something I brought to it lent itself to this iteration of the character. And I needed to better understand that to become more self-aware so that I could better control what I'm inputting um, into this performance. Um, and in doing so, I learned so much about myself, right? I, uh, I had to really... In my opinion, I had to grow in a really profound way on a personal level and therefore as an actor, right? I think with art, uh, your life is so inf informing of, of your work. And um, I had to become more than I was. I had to become uh, more clear-headed, better focused uh, to not be such a hypocrite. I was, you know, we, we can all be hypocrites in our own ways. And I feel like, like Spock has so much integrity and I uh, was in awe of that and, and wanted to become more like that in my own life. Uh, we wake up in the morning and, and we have the opportunity to have whatever thoughts we want, right? We, we, can, we can do things, but I think most importantly, we can think we're free in our minds, or at least that's, I think, a goal that we should all have. And Spock is so good and sharp with his mind. And, and I would say that I, I, I learned uh, most from him is, is, is to be more optimal with my thinking, to put it in a very Spockian way. Thank you so much. That was a wonderful answer. Oh, thanks. Thank you. And the last question will be Monica, Nerd News Social. Hi. Thank Hi. you so much for being here with us today. Um, I know you answered a lot of questions about how your version of Spock differs from Leonard Nimoy's, but since we're also used to seeing Leonard Nimoy as kind of the end result of the Spock uh, character, how did you deconstruct that sort of Batman year one, get that early version of the character based off of only seeing the end results? How did you pull yourself all the way backwards? It's a very flattering comparison. Batman's awesome. <laughs> uh, I... I don't know. I'm just kidding. I kind of know. Um, it's just been a very delicate and, and thoughtful process. Uh, I don't think I was able to 
um, be the Spock that you see in the original series, um, you know, a couple of years ago when I first got the role. I think even now I might be, in my opinion, touching on like the, the full, the more full spirit of that, of that version of Spock. Um, but I myself am in a place of development in my own life that I think really lends itself to this iteration of, of Spock. And I'm just really lucky to be in the right place at the right time for this role and to have been auditioning at that time. You know, there are so many things that worked in my favor uh, to put me in these shoes. And I'm just trying to capitalize on those, um, those aptitudes that I seem to have. All right. All right. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much for your participation in this roundtable. Please say your goodbyes as you exit. Oh, thank you all so much. Great to see you. Thank you. Hi, thank you. Thank My you. boyfriend recently passed away and he would be kind of geeking out that I get a chance to speak with Spock. And uh, oh. I think I'd be remiss if I didn't ask on his part what your favorite food was. <laughs> Oh, I'm so sorry to hear for your loss. Uh, Thank you. Oh, my favorite food, maybe Korean barbecue. That's what comes to mind right now. I'm sorry, I cut out. Korean barbecue. I, okay. That's what I want to <laughs> right now. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so Bye. much. And cut.